Howdy, y'all. My name is Price. I'm coming at you with some more. Be happy. How's it going, y'all? I know that this is a late coming episode, right? I only did two this week instead of three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Things have been so busy around here. But we're going to make this one a big one. All right? We are going to finish the Ultra Hive. Or at least I'm going to do as much as I can to finish the Ultra Hive. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. So I built up a whole bunch a glowstone stuffs, all right? I saved it up for a rainy day. Today is that day. I'm going to be doing my best to at least cap this sucker. And I would like to get in at least another layer of the floor. And like I said, it's not going to be a full floor like this. It's not just going to be layers, layers, layers like that. It's going to be like little kind of chunks that kind of hang off. One of y'all had a really good idea of like a spiral staircase that goes up through the middle. So I'm going to try and think about maybe how I can incorporate something like that. Kind of have it like go up a floor spirally and then kind of like fan out to the edge there and like have a little bit there and then have some open air areas then have another area up top that kind of goes like a longer one for a bigger super hive kind of thing. So we're gonna have a couple of different combs kind of hanging off the edges here. So that's gonna be the goal. But before we get to that, let's do a couple of other things. There's some stuff I want to show you. You might have just seen it out of the corner of your eye. I've been working on some nuclear power, y'all. I've been working on some nuclear power. But first things first, let's show you the changes on the inside. So as you can see, I got my bed sitting over here rather than over there because this area is full of reactor. That's right. I built us an even bigger, bigger reactor. This one has four, count them, four fuel rods filled with eulorium at the moment. Currently, the machines are turned off. I have them turned off because I wanted to turn them on for y'all. Um, the biggest factor now that I got to work on is getting more Eulorium. Uh, that's pretty much the big, the, the main factor. Uh, and then after that, we'll be pretty much set for these things to be running 24-7. Um, though I am a little bit worried about the turbine. But, so we got these four fuel rod suckers over here. Let's go ahead and open this sucker up. We got steam coming out. We got water coming out. Once I activate this, that'll all be working. I wanted to show you guys how I got this input, though. We got a bunch of water guys over here inputting on the side. Oh, hold on. Do, 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 do. And we got a whole bunch of nonsense up here. Basically, uh, and a lot of y'all informed me of this, so I'm glad that you did. Thank you very much for that. Um, that the biggest limiting factor on these turbines doesn't really seem to be the fuel going into here or the turbine reactor itself, the cyanide, the eulorium. That stuff seems to be pretty easy. Apparently, the, the hardest part to getting big ones is to being able to get enough water pumped in fast enough. So what I actually did... I'll show you here. Remember those upgrades that I found in uh, way over there forever ago? Well, I had a bunch of them sitting around, so I've put those, uh, I've spread them out through a lot of these ones, all right? I also, for several of these, these are all resonant, by the way. Remember I told you guys I wanted to make resonant aqueous accumulators? These ones are all resonant, so they're able to store more and they're able to work a little bit better. And I filled up some of them with these upgrades. Remember we've had these upgrades before? Uh, I filled a couple of them with them because we had some of them. We didn't have a ton, so they're not all with them, but some of them have them. So I have as much water getting pumped through as I can and these speed upgrades these things you see I got two of them in there I got a bunch of them because these ones I think are the ones that I figure are the closest um, they uh, what do they do they make things move faster Okay, so if stuff's moving faster through the pipes, then I figure it can get into here quicker. And I've checked, and it does seem that this sucker is always filled on water. Now you'll see we also have five of these. These are all hooked up to outputs, and those are all pumping steam as quickly as they possibly can up into the turbine above us. As you can see, I don't need tesseracts for this one because I have these things pretty much stacked on one another. But by having uh, as many of these as I do, and if I start running into steam-related issues, I might even put a couple more of these things on here. Um, this seems to be doing well enough to get this thing up above me steamed up just fine. Uh, we got our control rods, which I could limit the control rods if I wanted to slow things down, um, which we might have to, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, okay, so that's what we got there. Um, this guy right now up top, this guy's hooked up for the cyanite to get pumped out into the item drawers. I actually labeled that one. Uh, and this guy here is where we put in our eulorium. You can see there's a bunch of eulorium already on there. Let's go ahead and fill up the stack. And and, uh, yeah, I guess before I turn it on, well, no, no, I can go ahead and turn it on. I'll start generating steam. Why not? Activate this reactor. Let's start generating. You can see it gets up to heat real fast. And uh, once it starts giving you the numbers, once you actually start seeing how quickly it's producing, because once this stuff gets pumped out, it seems to be producing about 3,000 millibuckets per tick of uh, steam, which is a lot. Uh, it's probably way more than I need, which is why I may need to lower this down, because if the turbine goes too fast, it can uh, overload, overheat, explode, from what I understand. Uh, I see that it's nighttime outside, so let's go ahead and sleep really fast. Um, now, 
that thing's running. Let me go run you upstairs to the turbine room. A Juan, a do. Now, as you can see, here we have our turbine exactly where we left it. It's still got some things here, but they're not hooked up anymore. I left them as they were. I didn't really uh, have need for these things. Basically, I built way too many blocks, so it's fine. Now, this guy, as you saw below, it's getting the steam pumped up through it. Oh, and I didn't show you. Doot, doot. The other half to this, the water gets pumped out from here back into this system to turn into steam. So we got this nice loop here. Steam goes up, it condenses into water, comes back down, right back into this machine. Okay. Now, boop, nope, boop, boop. So, uh, I have extended this guy as well. Oh, and I, I hooked the power thing. The, the power guy is right there. Uh, the uh, power output thing, whatever it's called. What is this called? The turbine power port. Uh, and I just hooked it straight into this main line. I figured that would uh, work pretty well. Now, uh, let us boop, go and look at the size of this thing. It is huge. I have 28 blades, I believe. 28 blades. So each blade can hold, uh, can react to 25, um, what do you call it? Uh, 25 millibuckets per tick of steam. So if you cut 28 in half, that's 14, that's uh, 7. So we can handle about 700 millibuckets per tick, I think, if my math off the top of my head is correct. So if we're producing 3,000 and pumping that into this sucker that can only handle about 700, obviously we're going to run into some issues. So I have as many blades on there as I possibly can, uh, and hopefully... Um, we're able to adjust the ratios and whatnot to get this working properly, but when this sucker gets up to speed, holy crap. Let's just go ahead and I'll show you. Do you like that I added this little um, door here? I think that's pretty cool. It's like nice little access out here. I like I like that. I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, now, let's go ahead and get this sucker running. So here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do, we're going to disengage the coils, because if you disengage the induction coils, energy will not be extracted. The thing can get up to speed faster, basically. Oh, I didn't show you that. That's the other part. Uh, I made this three thick so that it's able to take uh, uh, even more energy um, from um, the blades. I figured that this was a good ratio, but again, I'm doing a lot of this just by kind of feel, so um, I didn't do any of the calculations and stuff. Online, there's a lot of big calculations for how to properly set up these reactors. I probably could basically have um, <clears throat> a reactor turbine of, th I probably have three times as many, is basically what I could do. Because uh, if this can only handle 700, that guy can produce 3,000 mil per tick, I could probably stack these guys a little bit more. What I might try and do is actually flip this guy vertical. Okay, so this guy going vertical and have like three of them up like that. So we have three turbines kind of pointing at the sky and then have the same setup down below um, kind of pumping into all three. We'll see if that ends up happening. But anyway, so that's the induction coil. So what we do is we turn off the induction coil. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the induction coil. We turn that off and then we start it speeding up. Okay, so now it's going to get up to speed faster because it's taking in all of the steam and it's turning that into speed, right? So he's starting to get moving. And we're going to let that run for a little bit, let those RPMs build up. Let me go double check on how the uh, reactor's doing downstairs. Okay, you're, you're using the fuel. Seem to be producing. It's getting up to, yeah, as you see, it goes to like 3,200, 3,400, 3,600, and then it like quickly drains and it comes back up. So it fluctuates, right? This ain't perfect. I would probably do well to get even more water pumping in here, because every now and then it'll take a hit where it'll empty all the way out. This stuff doesn't seem to be getting out fast enough, right? See, it seems to be always full. Then again, that means there's a buffer. So it's maybe not necessarily a bad thing, okay? But obviously there's some fluctuation going on there. But we hover around two to 4,000 millibuckets per tick. Let's see what kind of speed you're getting up to. All right, we're about 500, 600. Now, what you want optimally, as you can see, sort of red there. Let me, can I? Here's what I'm gonna do. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so, um, You'll see what it says there. It says 900 or 1800 RPM. So somewhere around those two speeds, okay? I'm not going to get up to 1800, um, or at least not quickly. But I will get to 900 here pretty quickly. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is get it right into that zone and then um, engage the power. So we're right in the, the butter zone right now, as Rick would call it. I'm going to engage the coils. You'll see that the speed will actually start to kind of hover. It'll fluctuate down. It'll fluctuate up. But it sticks roughly around this speed, but slowly creeps creeps upward, and that's what I worry about, because I don't want this thing getting up to uh, above 1800, because if once it gets up into that red line up there, things can go catastrophically wrong, from what I understand, and I think that the turbines can actually break. But it looks like it hovers pretty well in that 900, 950 range. I haven't been able to let it get up to speed yet. And as you saw, we're now producing about 8,000 RF a tick from this sucker here. All right? Not bad. Now, like I said, the one factor that might be an issue is our Yellorium output. Uh, our Yellorium 
Eulorium. We're still doing a pretty good job on producing Eulorium. Uh, you know, we've got our super hive over here um, of Eulorium, which only this side of it is actually Eulorium. That whole other side, that's all glowstone. But um, when we transfer this inside of the super hive, I think we will be um, maybe needing to increase the amount of that just so that we can have a nice backlog of Eulorium. I would like more than we need stored up. Uh, and then, you know, keep this going. Just, I mean, honestly, I'm doing this just because I want to. Just because it's cool to have the reactor. I like having it going. I think it's a cool structure. Um, all right, so now we're down around 880, 890. So it looks like we will hover in this range. Um, so that's good. When I was messing around with it earlier, it seemed like it was running real high. Um, so I'll let that run, and that's good. And a big part of it might be that we're filling up on power without our, uh, throughout our system because it's during the day, and then during the night it might draw more power from that guy. I'm actually going to switch this guy over to input. Uh, just let him store a little bit of energy. Why not? It's pretty quick. And then this guy is supposed to be on receiving energy. So that was the guy who was receiving energy from, like, outside. Um, so instead, I should set this to transmit. Uh, send and receive. Why not? Right? And actually, let's, um, let's just set it to send. So you're going to be on sending energy from this guy. And we'll set you to output. And now this should be good. So that means that any power coming from here will not only go down into this system, but will also, much like the solar panels up top, will also go to our tesseracts that are on frequency three, it looks like. I should set it to frequency one, because I believe frequency one is the power. Let me go check real quick. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. What frequency are y'all? I think these are frequency one, right? Frequency one. So I need to actually, let's, let's change this to... Um, Power plus. Okay, so frequency one is power. Like the basic power line. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I want to get myself in the, in the right habits here. If I want to go to this floor, I can go up this way. Man, look at how cool that looks when it's spinning at full speed. That is insane. Let's look at it from the top. Oh, man, that's super cool. I really dig that. I just love it when people add multi-blocks to Minecraft that are non-cuboidal. Like, once they're a shape that doesn't fit the normal cube skill. Like this, I like this. I think these are really cool in the way that they don't fit the normal cube set. Yeah, see, now we're up at 900. So, as you can see, it fluctuates a bit. Now, let's switch this guy to this one. And now he's on send as well. So, any power coming out of there will go straight into the external system as well. So, I like that. That's cool. Okay, now... This is what we've been doing with my nuclear power. This is what I've been playing around with. And as you can see, because of the number of blocks that we have, I had to build up a whole bunch of um, resources to uh, accomplish that goal. Now, what else do we have to do? Well, like I said, a big part of today's episode is going to be time lapse of me building this sucker. But we have a handful of other things that we can do. Specifically, let's complete some quests. Now, uh, blaze rods. Let's get some blaze rods. Do 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 do. Blaze rods. We need, I believe, just 64. Do, 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 do. Yep. Claim that reward. Okay. And then here we need 32 gas tiers. We need 32 blaze powder and 32 sulfur. Okay. So let's go for sulfur. Take a stack of that. Let's go for um, blaze powder. Take a stack of that. Let's drop these guys in here. Uh, let's go for, what was the other thing we need? Gas tiers. Let's take a stack of that. Okay, let's complete these guys. Do, do, do. Claim reward. Claim reward. Pyro. We need pyrothium dust. And then the other thing we need is 256 cookies. All right, so cookies. We're going to need several, but we have more than the uh, necessary 256. So how many is 256 in 64? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, maybe? Probably five. Uh, and then uh, we need some pyrothium dust. And there we go. So, let's grab this, boop, and claim. Claim, is my inventory full? Too much stuff in my inventory. Uh, to the system! Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I also added some more dra uh, drawers down below. I added two more rows of drawers to give us a little bit more storage space. Um, but honestly, I'm going to need to do a bigger overhaul on the um, storage system at some point here soon. All right, claim that reward. And finally, claim that reward. Boom, we have completed the resources quest. Let's look at our total sets of quests. We have 206, or there are 206 quests in total. We've unlocked 204 of them. We have seven left at the moment, uh, plus the two that we haven't unlocked, I think, right? Let's think. 
206 total, 197, 7 and 7 is 204. So yes, there's nine total that we have left to complete, it seems. Now, one of those is obviously the Super Wither Quest, which we're not doing anytime soon. Oh, these were just detect quests. Oh, I didn't have to even get rid of my cookies. We're going to hold on to these because we do need food now. Um, now that we're running a little bit low on chocolate milk. Uh, I can put away the Yalorium. That's good. Okay. Now. Time to... I think it's time to move on to that. Let me look through the rest of our quests real quick. Uh, because I would just like to see if there's anything else that we can complete at the moment. So not that guy. This guy. What are we working... Ah, the Creosote. The Creosote. That's right. I had meant to build that thing. People were saying that I also... I have a Terry... Let's see. Terry Queen. Uh, let me see what this guy does. Terry Princess, rather. Uh, apparently this guy might produce... Um, Creosote. Uses. Someone in the, uh, let's see. Fossilized comb, tar comb. Use. What does that produce? Squeezes into creosote propolis, which we can then squeeze and turn into creosote oil. Aha! So I don't even have to make that other sucker. We can use these Terry Queens. So, uh, then I will lay off on that quest. I'm gonna just quickly run him through the, um, or her, rather. I'm gonna run her through the, um, genomification station. Uh, I won't be messing with her too much during this episode. I'll probably off camera while I'm working on the system. I'll probably pop down here once, drop down an industrial apiary, start doing the cycle while I'm waiting on a couple things. Uh, but, uh, overall, that's what that's gonna be. So! With that, uh, I will cut away. I'm going to go grab a whole bunch of this glowstone that I have in this chest. I will take a couple of clips while I'm building. I find it a little bit easier for me. This is why I don't show a lot of building on camera. Uh, I like to build up and break down and build up and break down and build up and break down. It's a really long, slow process. But uh, for me, it works really well because I like to see what I do uh, and then take it back apart. Um, so um, with that in mind, you know, that's why I like to, you know, not do huge long building episodes, but instead just show kind of clips of me during the building process. So, with all that, hopefully y'all enjoy the coming uh, uh, show, where I'm going to show all the building process for this, and uh, I will see you on the other side of them time lapses. Alright y'all, see you there, bye! Look at it! Look at it! All right, so uh, I did not finish much of the interior, mostly because as I started building these hexes in here, I'm not super in love with these. I'm going to play around with some different ideas, and also I think I want to make sure to start from the center, um, build our spiral staircase in maybe a hex shape. 
uh, that kind of mirrors what I did up top there and uh, use that as kind of the model for the, um, the center staircase. And then uh, I'll, I'll build out from there. And just the, this color scheme here, I was thinking like, oh yeah, cool, like the chocolatey with kind of like the yellow and the more honeyish kind of color. That could be a cool combo. It gets a little muddy when you put these ones together um, so close. So I think I'm gonna have to play around with it. Stuff like this is kind of cool. I was trying to mimic a B color pattern there. And as you can see, I tried to carry that in, but I don't know how it looks. So I'm gonna play around with ideas for the interior. But the exterior is pretty much done. Now, I know my shape is not actually perfect. Um, it's something that I realized, you know, after I'd gotten a big way through it, I must have mixed up something somewhere. You can see, like, right there, looks a little bit off center on the inside. On the exterior, I've fixed most of the issues. On the interior, I'm gonna have to do some chipping away. Um, I'm probably actually gonna put up walls on the inside of some sort, so we'll see how that works out. But let's go ahead and look at it from the outside. Woo! Okay, so, um, as you can see, I kept most of the, um, simple, uh, beehive shape going forward. We have our three layers that are, you know, kind of perfect flats, all right? They're kind of, they're, they're big walls, right? And then I started to kind of curve a little bit here, but it's not fully curved. And then here is where I really curved a lot and then really kind of capped off the top. And then I decided, you know, I was like, I want to have honey flowing down the side of it. I want to have something kind of cool. So I added this um, kind of uh, standard glowstone um, hex to the top because I thought that's a cool shape that fits really well with the uh, interior and whatnot and with bees and stuff. So I'm gonna need to come in here and I'm gonna need to chip out a couple of things on the inside. Again, my uh, my uh, jetpack isn't making any noise right now, which is always frustrating. Um, and then I decided like, okay, cool. I have some honey kind of dripping off of the edge over here. So I'm gonna play around with how this honey flows down and kind of, you know, mess with what this is gonna look like. As you can see, I spilled a bunch of honey all over the place. So I'm gonna have to deal with that problem at some point, I think. This should fix itself, if I'm not mistaken. No, yeah, because this guy, yeah, this guy shouldn't actually be doing anything anymore. I don't have any blocks on me, but uh, I, I can plug that up and it'll be gone because that guy actually came from here. Um, and so as you can see, I just kind of dripped a bunch of honey down the edge, let it kind of flow on down. It takes forever for the honey to move, by the way. Um, so I'll slowly but surely, that thing will stop spreading across the whole floor. I'll be able to put my torches back and everything will be fine. But for right now, it's being a real butt. Uh, let me see if I can just go grab one of these blocks real fast. Yeah, just give me, give me something here. Come here. Thank you. Just gonna quickly these. Are you gonna stop? Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna come through here and chop all this down later. But mostly, yeah, I was just trying to get this to line up properly so it wouldn't do exactly what it did here. What I think happened was when that middle line hit these lines that I had already made perfect, it kind of threw them off balance and now they're all confused. So I'm gonna have to mess with this honey, obviously, in order to get it back on track. I'm good with, with getting the honey to do what I wanted to do, but only when I'm focused on it. And what I did was I set that stuff down and then I went back inside and started working on stuff. And then when I came out, it had done this. So uh, I'll be dealing with that <laughs> pretty soon. But uh, anyway, so this is what we got going on now. I'm going to bu uh, bust out a bunch of walls and make more of these guys kind of along the way. So like this guy's on the second level. So I'll probably do one like back over here on like the third level and then back over here on like the fourth level. Uh, and then add a couple of other kind of designy elements. I think like if I could get a spiral around it of something, I think that would be kind of cool. Um, so uh, we didn't finish it today, but we've certainly made a lot of progress. And I think I can easily, once I get a couple of of um, these interior things set. What I want to do is kind of have like a quarter, maybe like, yeah, like a quarter circle here. Um, so roughly from, not quite where it's at right now, maybe like right in the center of that right there. Okay, right where that glowstone is. I kind of want a quarter of this, just kind of like that's what I want for the floor on this floor. And then I'll start hanging some of my bees from there so that we'll have our first parts of the super hive. And then I'll start decorating with the products of what those bees create. Cause like I said, that's a big part of it is I want to get stuff in here and then have the actual critters themselves um, look at like they're, um, you know, creating like crusts around the edge of their honeycombs because, you know, bees and animals tend to do that sometimes where they'll kind of like the, whatever they're using, the material will kind of show itself. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, anyway, that's the, uh, the hive so far. We're working on it. It's getting there. I'm going to go, oh, man, that mess. Oh, that mess. It's bothering me. I'll deal with it. Oh, it looks like it's fixing itself now. Once I, once I deal with this, but, um, but yeah, so that's where we're currently at with the ultra super mega awesomeness hive. Um, and 
Uh, I think that I'll do a little bit of um, working on this uh, between episodes. I'll do a little bit of stuff having to do with breeding the bees and whatnot, but um, we'll move on to something else next episode. So um, I guess the last thing I want to say is, oh, I can hear this tree getting chopped down. Um, well, let's just move over here. The last thing I want to say is um, I am likely, and you'll probably, there'll be a, um, uh, what do you call it? a uh, vlog coming out here soon to explain all this, but I'm likely going to be moving Be Happy to being um, two episodes a week instead of three episodes a week just because uh, I need to give myself a little bit more time, and I think that with Be Happy, I'm always struggling to get a whole bunch of stuff done for Be Happy anyways. I always spend way more time on it than I should, um, and so I think by putting it down to two episodes, I'll be able to give myself a little bit more time during the week, because like Stardew Valley, you see all the work I put into Stardew Valley. Be Happy, every, I think I've said this before, but like I put in like three times as much time as you guys see just because of the amount of time it takes for resources to build up or just kind of doing a lot of the boring here and there type stuff that I don't think that you guys want to see anyways. So uh, anyway, we're probably going to be moving to two days a week here shortly. Hopefully that doesn't bug uh, too many of y'all too much. And what that'll mean is then each episode will just be a little bit more dense. We'll just have more stuff happening in each episode, or at least I'll be aiming to make it so that each episode is more eventful and we won't have as many like filler episodes. I'm just like, all right, now we're just doing this and now we're just doing that. Okay, so anyway, y'all, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you like the progress with where we're going with this guy. He's not done. He's got a lot of work left to be done, but uh, I'm, I'm digging it. I think the shape uh, worked out pretty well. I, originally, I had thought of making it a lot, uh, much taller, um, but then as it was starting to come together, I realized, I was like, if I make it too tall, it's going to look um, not very beehivey, but I feel like this looks pretty beehivey. Like, if you were to say, like, a cartoony beehive... That looks like a cartoony beehive, other than all like the weird stuff that I've done on the side with all the honey flowing out and all the weirdness. But uh, other than that, looks like a cartoony beehive. So uh, anyway, y'all, with all that, oh, oh, and by the way, do please give me your suggestions for what else to add on to this guy, because I love hearing y'all suggestions like the spiral staircase that one of y'all had. Great idea. Gonna happen. So be sure to give me your ideas, because there's a good chance I might actually use them, because you guys, you're a bunch of bright little beautiful butterflies and bees, and as a result, uh, I really want to hear all of your great ideas. So, um, with all that, thank you all for watching. If you liked yourself, please be sure to give this video a like, a favorite, and subscribe to the channel. My name has been Price, and I will see y'all next time!